Hello everyone, Brian Morales from the U.S. Department of State coming to you from Washington, D.C. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the fifth annual conference of the International Consortium of Universities for Drug Demand Reduction, or ICU-DDR. The network has held meetings now in Hawaii, in Prague, San Diego, and also in Cusco, Peru. But this is the first time that it holds an online virtual conference. So I want to thank the organizers and express my, um, my admiration for taking on such an ambitious task. Uh, this is um, something I think that will repeat itself in, in years to come and help find a broader audience and attract more members. On that note uh, of membership, I've been really impressed to see that since 2016, when INL and some other international partners came together to establish ICUDDR, there are now more than 200 members that are part, uh, a part of the organization. And I think this is a testament to the value that universities around the world find in the work of ICU-DDR. There are many challenges in establishing academic programs uh, that relate to, to this field of study. And it's through a consortium such as this that universities are able to identify these challenges um, and, and help overcome, um, overcome them. And they extend from everything from, um, from the actual courses and, and course structure and competencies and domains of study, all the way through how to create career tracks for students, how to create internship opportunities, linkages to community organizations, being able to, um, to have advocacy with policymakers as well for, for recognition of the field. There's many, many uh, challenges, but I think that the consortium and the conversations uh, um, with the, the, between the universities have really made headway in, in tackling these, uh, these and many others. And part of that, I think, is also a testament to the, first, the leadership of the organization. Uh, I want to recognize and thank Kim Johnson and Carrie Els Hopkins and uh, Mikhail Miofsky and, and the whole board for, for the wonderful work that they've done in, in meeting um, really the day-to-day the, the, the -day, um, needs and interests of, of its members. Uh, and also I want to extend my appreciation to the regional coordinating centers in North America, Latin America and the Caribbean, Europe, Africa, Middle East and Asia that have really stimulated the conversation at the regional level and helped uh, really deepen a, a, a tailored a, approach to, to the regional challenges that are faced uh, with, with, um, with the development of these, of these programs. Now, these are difficult times that we're all facing with uh, COVID-19. I think that the issue of substance use, as we've seen in the press and seen in some initial research, uh, is very concerning. The, the populations uh, with substance use disorders are disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 crisis. So in fact, this is a time to redouble our efforts, to connect more, to connect more with that workforce, not just the next generation, but the existing workforce that need the resources and the tools. And uh, I've, I've seen uh, already, you know, the, the outreach from universities uh, across the world in, in being able to to respond to to that need. Uh, we see that the that the workforce is also aging, and um, and uh, we need to sort of redouble our efforts in expanding programs so that um, they can be ready for for as I mentioned this this next generation of of workers in the field. There's a few ways that INL is uh, adapting to the new realities that that we are facing. As many of you know, we have supported for many years a curriculum series called the Universal Curricula. We have a Universal Treatment Curricula, Universal Prevention Curriculum, and, and other courses um, that, that are outside of that as well. Well, all these courses, as, as many of you know, are face-to-face -face courses. Over the coming months, we will be working and inviting universities such as yours to transform these courses into an online format so that we can have instructor-led training and really help disseminate the materials to a broader audience. So, um, so we look forward to putting that call for requests um, uh, for proposals through ICUDDR and our other partners such as ISEP, the International Society of Substance Use Professionals, and we hope that uh, many of you will, will apply for, for, um, to, to help us in that transformation. Additionally, I'm very excited that over the coming year, we will be partnering with ICU-DDR 
and the U.S. Addiction Technology Transfer Centers to launch the International Technology Transfer Centers, or ITTCs. These networks will uh, focus on um, empowering national universities, universities at the national um, level, to be able to um, assess and look at a systems approach in diagnosing some barriers to effective implementation of prevention, treatment, and recovery programming. And uh, the, the broader network of ITTC universities across countries will also come together. Uh, in fact, it will be a, a, a subset of ICUDDR's broader network. And we're very excited to see um, the systems approach being implemented to thoughtfully diagnose what, um, how treatment, prevention, and recovery systems can be strengthened and improved in our partner countries. So that's something that we're, we're proud to be supporting in the coming year. I want to conclude by thanking all of you, the members of ICUDDR, for your support of the work that takes place through uh, both at these conferences, but even more so offline through the exchange of research, of evidence-based practices, of support, mutual support to each other. And I encourage you, if you're not a member, to please consider uh, becoming members um, or finding other universities within your communities, your countries, to also join. It's through the strength of, of, of our broad network that we'll be able to really provide the best formation possible to um, the current generation and the next generation of, of prevention, treatment, and recovery professionals around the world. Thank you all for your interest and enjoy the conference over the coming week. Take care. Dear friends, I'm so happy to say hello to all of you and express my personal thanks for your interest to participate on our upcoming event, ICUDDR Conference 2020. Despite to all circumstances, we have a very nice agenda, very nice program and hopefully you will have an opportunity to participate on this program. I would like to express my special thanks to entire ICU DDR team for doing this job and creating this program, despite to all circumstances given by COVID infection. I'm only sad that we cannot meet personally in Thailand and, uh, and, and I hope that we will meet personally in Thailand next year or maybe a year later and, we, and that we will have an opportunity to conduct our conference as we planned uh, in, in Thailand. I would like also to express my thanks to our supporters and all partners, ISAP and INL team and thanks so much to all of our colleagues and partners for uh, giving this opportunity and creating, um, and creating this wonderful space and, and friendship. You know, for our work, we need something like this. We need some, something uh, like support and, and to know that we are not alone in our work and especially in your work, you probably had really a hard last month and all of you are probably all right and hopefully are all right and please take your time and stay safe and enjoy, uh, enjoy our program and hopefully we will meet together personally really soon. Thank you and enjoy our program. My name is Adam Nam and I am the Executive Secretary of the Inter-American Drug Abuse Control Commission known by its Spanish language acronym, CCAT. CCAT is part of the Organization of American States and is the consultative and advisory body of the OAS on the drug problem. It serves as a forum for OAS member states to discuss and find solutions to the drug problem, as well as providing member states technical assistance to increase their capacity to counter this problem. Since its establishment in 1986, CCAD and its executive secretariat have responded to the ever-evolving challenges of drug control and have promoted regional cooperation and coordination with and among OAS member states. In accordance with our Hemispheric Plan of Action on Drugs, 
CCAD's demand reduction unit seeks the creation and strengthening of mechanisms for dissemination of information related to drug use and assists OAS member states with prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, and social integration services. Our demand reduction unit profits from collaboration with universities and research centers in the promotion of evidence-based policies and programs. In this regard, I am pleased that CCAD and the ICU DDR signed a memorandum of understanding in May 2019, establishing a framework for cooperation and technical assistance in the development of training activities, research, and international cooperation among universities of the Western Hemisphere. Through this Memorandum of Understanding, ICU-DDR recognizes CCAD as the Regional Coordination Center on Drug Demand Reduction Activities for universities and other educational institutions in Latin America and the Caribbean. It is in this role that CCAD congratulates ICU-DDR for its first virtual conference which will address important topics such as online teaching platforms. Discussions of this sort are crucial as the world continues to adapt to the realities of the coronavirus pandemic. My best wishes for a successful conference. Hello everyone, I'm Nathalie Panvoke from the Drug Advisory Program of the Colombo Plan. We are very excited to welcome you to the first virtual conference organized by the International Consortium of Universities for Drug Demand Reduction. ICU DDR conference is one of many firsts that have come up in the recent months. We have all had to move our work online to ensure service provision, technical assistance, skills development and training continue with the least possible disruption due to the global lockdown caused by the coronavirus. COVID-19 has made it very challenging for us all. But in these times of physical distancing, it is heartening to see everyone working together and coming up with new ways to maintain contact and continue this very important work while maintaining health, safety, and well-being for us and those we work with. DAP's main objective is to assist our member states and other partner countries address problems relating to drug use, abuse, and trafficking through technical assistance, specialized training programs, and credentialing examinations. DAP joins ICU DDR in supporting the development and improvement of skills and competencies of substance use professionals in treatment, prevention, and public health. We look forward to this conference, which will introduce panelists and discussions of these issues with a focus on the present times. DAP is very excited that it's all happening online because it allows the entire DAP team to participate and learn new tips and strategies for working in this field from the safety of our home. I'd like to thank INL and ICU DDR for inviting us, making all of this possible. I hope you find this an enjoyable learning experience. I know I will.